Episode 152 of CPP Cast with guests Tom Brezza, Oliver Din, and Tristan Brindle, recorded May 30th, 2018. This episode of CPP Cast is sponsored by PVS Studio, one of the most powerful static analyzers for your C, C++, and C Sharp source code. PVS Studio will let you detect errors and potential vulnerabilities at the earliest stage. Try the demo version today at viva64.com. In this episode, we discuss a warning from Bjarne Struestrup to the ISO committee. Then we talk to Tom, Oliver, and Tristan from the C++ London Uni. They talk to us about how they've been teaching C++ in London and online for free. Welcome to episode 152 of CPP Cast, the only podcast for C++ developers by C++ developers. I'm your host, Rob Irving, joined by my co-host, Jason Turner. Jason, how are you doing today? I'm all right, Rob, but you know, 152 episodes. Uh, so I was just interviewed by another podcast, and that will be coming out relatively soon. It's embedded.fm. And I, I could not remember how many episodes of CPP Cast we had done <laughs> during that interview. I felt terrible. I'm like, it's 152. That can't be right. It can't be 150. Maybe it's 120. I don't know what it is, basically. <laughs> well, how did the other oh, well. interview go with Embedded FM? Uh, I think it went well. Um, it's weird being you know, on the other side of the table, as it were. Um, it I, hopefully they think it went well as well. <laughs> I, I haven't heard of that one. Have they been around for a while? Uh, honestly, I'm not sure. I think they've been around for a while, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure how long, though. I'll have to look into that. They probably said what episode number it was at the beginning, and I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, top of every episode, I like to read a piece of feedback. Um, uh, when I was editing last week's episode, I posted a tweet. Um, I recently got a new kitten for my family, and uh, it's a really, really curious cat, and it was really interested in what <laughs> I was doing uh, with Audacity, editing the episode, and I took a picture of that and, and tweeted it out. And I got a couple of responses to that. One was uh, from Fabian saying, love the pre-show notes. Is uh, Jason clicking, not clicking his pen? Which is yes. something we've had in the show notes for like the past 120-some episodes. Uh, roundabout, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, and it was funny because I saw that tweet. Yeah. Yeah, click. I, I saw the tweet, but I didn't realize how high resolution of a picture it was until someone else commented. I'm like, how in the world did they? So I like had to click and open it and like, oh my goodness, yes, that is like everything right there. <laughs> Legible. <laughs> uh, and Patrice also uh, posted a reply saying, I understand this very much with his, how, how many animals did he say he had last time we had him on? Oh, I don't know. It's an always changing number. And I really don't know what people were complaining about previously. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd love to hear your thoughts about the show. Uh, you can always reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, or email us at feedback at cpcast.com. And don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, joining us today, we actually have three guests, uh, Tom, Oliver, and Tristan. Uh, Tom arrived in London at age 22 with 200 pounds to his name, not knowing a single person. After six months, Tom managed to start a business, PC Service, that provides IT support to SMBs and runs it since then. Tom's team helps many customers from small businesses to top celebrities and royal families. Now with over 20 years of experience, Tom set his mind on new challenges and decided to learn software development, specifically C++, and helps others to learn through C++ London Uni. Oliver has been a C++ hater since 2008. Fortunately, that all changed with C++11, and he's firmly an enthusiast now. He spent his time doing everything from embedded devices to network engineering and now internet security-related endeavors. He's a big proponent of writing software in a style driven by some form of testing and its place in pushing you towards well-architected, maintainable code. In his spare time, he also co-organizes C++ London Uni, which provides free lessons for people wanting to get into developing C++ and the wider ecosystem around it. 
And Tristan is an independent contractor and C++ enthusiast based in London. He's particularly interested in standardization and making C++ an easier language to use and teach. He can be found on Twitter at Tristan Brindle and occasionally blogs about C++ at TristanBrindle.com. Guys, welcome to the show. Hi. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> that was It'll the be... longest bio you, I think you, you ever read. Uh, and this is going to be interesting, keeping everyone's long voices. Lives. Yeah, so real quickly, um, Tom, can you just introduce yourself so people can get the voice, voices associated with you? Yes, of course. Uh, so my name is Tom. Uh, so I'm uh, the, the initial uh, person behind the, the uni. But obviously, uh, well, the uni wouldn't be uni without my colleagues. So uh, pretty much that, that's me. And you pretty much summarized what, what I did in the last <laughs> 20 years. Uh, okay. Apart from that, obviously, I got some family, uh, two wonderful boys, and I spent my days in, uh, well, now a bit rainy uh, London. Okay. I'll... Rainy London, who thought? Yeah, rainy London. Uh, yeah, hi guys. Yeah, so I'm Oliver. Uh, obviously, I currently work in London. I've um, been to a few other places as well. Uh, obviously, a very keen C++ enthusiast, and I'm very excited to uh, be on CPP cast as well. Okay, it's great to have you. And uh, Tristan? Uh, I'm Tristan. I'm the English guy who isn't Oliver. Um, so. <laughs> you're not English. You're 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 Australian. Well, both, but yeah. Or both, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So, is there more of a story there? Did you grow up in Australia or something? Uh, no, I um I moved over there oh nearly ten years ago and um stayed there long enough to go through all the immigration procedures to get citizenship. And then uh, uh, moved back back to the UK last year. So, <laughs> and as soon as you became possible. a citizen, then you moved back. <laughs> More or less, yeah. <laughs> Mission accomplished, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, guys. Well, we'll uh, be talking a lot more about C++ London Uni, the project you guys are all working on. Uh, but first, we just have a couple news articles to discuss. So uh, you know, feel free to share any comments you might have about these, okay? Sure. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, so this first one is a paper um, from Bjarne Struestrup that he submitted to the ISO C++ committee. And uh, this is an interesting one. He's not proposing any new features or anything. He's, he's kind of actually criticizing um, the amount of other proposals that are currently out there going to the committee. Uh, this is titled Remember the Vasa, mm -hmm. which is a reference to a story I had not heard of before reading this, but it's uh, a Swedish ship that went through so much uh, redesign that it sank like immediately after <laughs> leaving the harbor. And uh, it's something that the C++ committee used to reference a lot, apparently. Um, make sure the language doesn't get too complicated or it's just going to sink, I guess. And that's what he's worried about with all the papers currently going into C++20. Yeah, and, and he lists here 43 papers, mm -hmm. and they are specifically, I think, only from the, uh, there's some, I thought there was a comment here, but he only chose only a specific number of authors to, oh, never mind. I remiss, I misread that. So, never mind. I don't know what I'm saying. But, 43 papers that are in flight, at least, for this uh, standards meeting. Yeah, and, and he did mention that uh, several of those papers are, are ones that he has endorsed himself or, or is, you know, a part of. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. I I I I do wonder myself um, if we're at risk for leaving behind the average programmer, the 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 daily C plus plus programmer, in favor of the cool and interesting new features that we want to add. Yeah, and I feel like that's something that you know the committee maybe should focus a little bit more on. Like how how many of you know, do these features really help the average C plus plus programmer? Who's yeah. not a member of the committee. Yeah. I don't know, well, essentially, guys, we have, no, yeah. Okay. Do you guys have any thoughts on this? As average C++ oh. programmers or, or people teaching Oli? average C++ programmers? Oli, Tristan, do you want to um, start? Yeah, sure. I mean, for me, I mean, I think, I think he's got a point. Um, you know, the, the number of papers that were submitted um, for Rappers Will is, is obviously a very large number. Um, me and Tristan actually are at the BSI, the uh, British Standards Institute yesterday, the, the national body obviously where these were reviewed. Um, and there was some, there, I believe, there was some brief discussion on it. Um, yeah, he, he he has obviously got a point. Um, 
you know, it, it's interesting. It was interesting to see that out of the list he gave, there's only sort of a couple he sort of explicitly starred and was like, oh, I really like these. Um, but then I, I kind of remember a number of years ago, he was sort of also complaining like, oh, the committee's kind of moving too slow and, you know, not doing enough. So I was sort of sitting there thinking, oh, well, you know, I don't often complain about there being too many papers in, a, in the proposal list, but when I do, I make it a proposal. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I do, I do kind of agree with him. Um, I think part of the problem as well seems to be that you know, for the things that are in flight, like um, gauze coroutines, or um, also two D graphics, you know, we're, we're seeing these papers coming in that are then saying, well, actually, we don't like this, so here's a completely different way of doing it, and we could use this instead. And I think that sort of many people in inserting their sort of own ingredients into the pot. But whether that's a bad thing or not, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and he kind of comments that there's there doesn't seem to be a lot of work done with saying how will these features interact with other proposed features. And it almost <laughs> like strikes me as like drug interactions in a way, like, you know, by the time you're on 15 yeah, different prescriptions or whatever. I think that I think that's something C++ already does have quite a bad reputation for, so it's definitely something that should be borne in mind by the committee when they're reviewing papers. Is how is how are these proposed facilities going to going to gel together? I mean, yeah, I, I agree with that, but you know, what we'll probably end up seeing then is that C++ 20 will throw in these new features, and it will end up being like C++ 14 was like, oh, we discovered all these defects. Whoops, we should fix those. <laughs> I mean, from the from the position of the let's say the, the newbie I'm among here, uh, it's you know there, there's lots of lots of uh, interesting projects, but I, I would basically personally like to see a project uh, like a prioritization of the project that might help uh, people who want to start with the, obviously with the language because language is is fairly fairly difficult if you compare it to the high level languages like. Uh, Python and JavaScript and so on. So it it, it requires more uh, for people to to do. So I was trying to learn Boost uh, some time ago, a couple of couple of days ago, and in order to do the first tutorial, I spent like eight hours trying to set up a CMake because there were mm -hmm. conflict with a version. So if I like, okay, it, eventually after eight hours, I did manage. But I can imagine not many people would be happy to spend so much time trying to run a tutorial, the first tutorial, not some advanced tutorial, just the first one, to display Hello World with a delay of five seconds. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it, it was a, a, a steep learning, learning curve for me on, on that one. Well, I mean, you probably, sorry, go on. No, I just said, well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, that's probably more than me. If, if it took you eight hours and you, you've learned the entirety of Boost, though, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know all of those libraries. I, it's the, the amount in it is crazy, but I, I definitely understand your, your woes. I mean, Boost.build, obviously, if you're trying to sort of make it work and your CMake base, it's, it's not the most pleasant of experiences. Although, I mean, one, one of the good things about Boost as well is that a lot of it is header only, so you, you can avoid a lot of that pain in certain cases, obviously, not all of them. Some, some of the libraries require compilation. Right. right. Uh, let's pause again real quick, because it looks like Tristan dropped off it's the dropped, call. yeah. Yeah. And, so and Alder, we're, we're still getting a lot of clicking from, from your yeah, I, speaker. Yeah, I might... I might try a final alternative because this microphone works great if I just don't wear the headset. I need I need to be able to hear you. Uh, yes. um, if you have a minute waiting for Tristan to come back on, if you want to yeah. see final alternative. Let me, let, me pause, let me pause Audacity one sec and let's try something. Uh, no, no, don't pause Audacity. Don't, 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 don't pause. Okay, I just, <laughs> just did. Just let it run. For a few it's fine. Seconds. Okay, I've unpaused it. All good. Uh, hopefully, I can make <laughs> Skype switch my audio. <laughs> Uh, now Rob will have to figure out where that three-second uh, delay oh, is sorry. to try to line it back up again. Okay. Note. Sorry. Can Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm all right. Can you hear yourself? <laughs> my I'm, my I'm, laptop decided to spontaneously reboot. I don't know what happened. I can only apologize. I, hopefully, I'll be okay now. Okay. Uh, I'll sorry about trying that. to get a different microphone right now. Uh, I've just moved my headset. Can you hear me okay? And you can't hear yourselves? Yeah, yeah we, I'm okay. we can hear you. Yeah, oh, Pro right. la la loud and clear. Then, then it's, it's all good now because I'm not wearing the headset, so it's not going to click. Interesting. Oh, okay. Perfect. Now, on the actual waveform, do you see it recording both of us? Uh, say something. Test, test, test. 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 
One, two, three, four, five. It it, it registers, but it's that the waveform is barely there. Really want, that, that, that'll that'll work. All right. Okay. I, I I hypothesize you'll end up going with the merged recording, regardless. For this one, yeah, it might be easier. No. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the next article. All right. Ready? Okay. Yep. Uh, okay, and next one we have a uh, celebration of Towel Day uh, with awesome pieces of code that print 42. Uh, and this was posted on uh, Fluency Plus Plus, Jonathan Buckerah's blog, um, May 25th, which is Towel Day, which is a, a reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy novels. And uh, this is just a kind of a fun post showing all these different ways of printing out 42 in a simple C++ program. I'll, I say simple, but some of them are actually pretty complex. Um, the first one is, you know, just prints out 42 within with 42 characters of code. I thought that one was kind of nice. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, some of these were, were pretty beautiful, actually. Yeah, the second one, I'm still, like, I've read it a couple times, but still a little lost on... So it's a random number generator. It, quote, randomly pulls num- uh, letters from a bag until it gets the string that says, what do you get when you multiply 6 times 9? 42. Yeah. But uh, it, clearly it has to be seeded with some known value for this to work, but I don't see where that's happening. Maybe it's seeded with a random device, the seeder, the, it's the Mercene Twister, but I still don't <laughs> see. It's fun, though, anyhow. Yeah, a lot, yeah. lot of fun examples in here. Yeah, it look, looks like the, 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 this article is aimed more at me because the, <laughs> the, 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 the lower entry level. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I didn't hear about the, the celebration, but I did try to run some of the code that would actually produce in my own version. I was very ambitious. I tried to do 42. I stopped after f- 5, but I print out, like, you know, 5 version of how to get 42, and I remember I was uh, basing this uh, on, uh, there was one guy called, I think, Lefticius, and he was doing a funny way of printing, the, 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 the most weird way of printing Hello World. That mm. was quite fun. <laughs> it was like a, like a video podcast type thing. You, sometimes you could check out, quite nice. Was that, was that Lefticus, do you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm, oh, see, who I could did... that be? Oh, who could that guy be? I wonder. <laughs> Oh my goodness! That so was that actually your one. Uh, what's uh, what, I forget what episode that was that I just said, and now I'm going to print "Hello World" the most complicated way I can. I think I forget where it was. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is a was a Simple Plus Weekly episode. It was a Simple Plus Weekly episode that has like a lambda immediately invoked lambda for no good reason at all. That's capturing and printing something right in main. I I forget what it was now though. Okay. Uh, last thing we have is a little bit of conference uh, announcements and, and uh, not so much announcements as, as requests, actually. Uh, the first one is Pacific Plus uh, Plus. They still have an open call for speakers. Uh, I think they have all their, their keynoters, but they're still looking for more uh, presenters for the conference. Right, Jason? Yeah, and we, we know how this goes every year. People wait until, like, five minutes after the deadline to submit your conference talks. <laughs> but I do recommend that you don't do that. It makes it much easier on the conference committee if they or the conference organizers if they know, hey, we actually have like, you know, enough people submitting talks this year or whatever. So if you have any interest in all in going to Pacific Plus Plus, I do recommend you you go ahead and submit your talk. Let's see the commission submissions close well, it says June 17th, um, but let's say for the sake of argument, it closes June 10th, so go ahead and get your submissions in, in the next week. <laughs> good good suggestion. Okay, and then the last one is uh, CPPCon. They already are past their call for speakers, but they are looking for program committee members, and this is the, the people who go about uh, evaluating submissions and deciding which talks are actually going to be part of the conference. Yeah, and I think they might have gotten a record number or a very high number of submissions, so they have a lot of submissions to go through. Do definitely need the help. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Tristan, Tom, and Oliver, uh, we, we went through the introductions and, and mentioned C++ London Uni a bit. Can you start us off by just explaining what exactly it is? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the, the C++ London Uni is, uh, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's our group. Uh, it, it started basically 
couple of years ago, I wanted to, I started playing with Arduino and so on, and I wanted to learn a bit more about, you know, the software development because I had a small accident where I uh, built an alarm clock uh, with uh, Arduino potentiometers and so on. And I wanted to create an alarm and for seven o'clock in the morning. And I had a problem how to compare hours and minutes on a time with the set for the alarm. And I come out, oh, why not to add them? And that's giving me a figure, yeah? So zero, seven at hours plus zero, zero, that's seven. Simple, which I didn't actually think through. That will be because I finished like doing that after midnight. So six minutes past one o'clock will be equal to seven as well. So I woke the whole family. Uh, my wife wasn't very impressed with me. <laughs> and I decided that I should actually do something about, you know, learning some coding and so on. So I started going for uh, Udemy courses and so on, reading some books and so on. But I was constantly looking for something else, like like an on-site course. So I said, okay, I'll go for the course in London. I did. Uh, it was okay. The the book was uh, which we've been going through, uh, textbook was was very old, but really explains very well. But the course was extremely packed, so I couldn't actually, there was no time to, to go with people, you know, through the, the information chat and do katas and what have you. It was like, go, 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 and everybody disappeared to home. So I said, like, mm, that's not really this one. So I found uh, the meetup, uh, which is run by Phil Nash, obviously. So I said, oh, okay, I'll, you know, first I went there. And after hearing, you know, how complex the, the charts were, so I just basically chicken out and I run away, didn't go to the pub, I just uh, quietly left the, the room. Uh, but I uh, said, okay, I can't leave it like that. So I come back and I start talking to Phil and I had like a really devious plan. I said, like, I know what I'll do. I will convince Phil he should start something like it. Yeah, like a, like a club where people can go and teach and I will just jump in and I will participate. That would be nice. Well, Phil was better negotiator than me, so he convinced me to do that. And <laughs> that's how the uni started. So we have a weekly classes. Uh, and basically, we try to teach people for free to become a software developers. Uh, guys, do you want to add something? Um, sure, yeah, I can. Um, I mean, obviously, from my perspective, it's a bit different because you were the one that sort of spearheaded it. But yeah, I mean, I remember very well... Um, I can't remember how I sort of heard it. I'd, I'd shown up to one of the main C++ London events, and uh, I think it may have been Phil even that told me that this was happening, and, you know, I should go and check this out. And I think you were sitting at a table uh, down at Codenode, uh, and then obviously we had a chat, and then, of course, I showed up at the very first one and sort of got a feel for it. I think you already pulled Tristan on board, but I think Tristan can speak more to that. And then, obviously, you know, I think I missed the second lesson, got into the third, and then sort of stuck with it, and, you know, we've all arrived here now, so it's been, I think it's been great. Tristan, what do you think? Yes, yeah, so for those who don't know, C++ London is a monthly meetup for uh, C++ developers uh, in London, and it's, it's run by, by Phil Nash. And um, I, he, one of the sort of announcements at the start was that they were starting this new thing, C++ London University, as it was then. Um, and I thought, well, you know, that'd be fun. I'll get involved, see what I can do. And, um, and whatever we are now, six months later, I'm still, still involved, so... Eight months. So eight months, and you've been going every week for eight months. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I think we've had a couple of hiatuses. We we had a summer. We had a couple of weeks off over the summer, or Christmas rather. Yeah, holiday, I mean, we, pretty much every week, apart from like a situation where it's uh, Christmas or something like it. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, we did manage to keep to to weekly schedule. At the beginning, we I think we lost one week where we couldn't uh, secure uh, space because obviously we need a, a physical room where people can meet up. Uh, and you know, when you do it for free, uh, you don't pay. Uh, you 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 don't always get what you would like to get. Is we rely a lot on, on, you know, generosity of, you know, uh, lots of supporters, you know, uh, businesses and, and, and the like. Okay, so I'm, I'm curious now. Tom, you, you basically, through Phil's finagling, uh, started this university without knowing C++. Is that correct? Well, yes, that's correct. I don't, I, I don't know any other language. Well, I don't know C++, yes, to us, uh, us you know, us to become a developer. Uh -huh. Maybe Oli can, can, can uh, disagree with that a bit because uh, the, he checked my knowledge with Tristan. Uh, 
but yeah, I didn't know any langu- any 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 software development language. I didn't know definitely C plus plus, and well, because there was nothing there, so nobody wants to do it. So there, I had no much choice than do it. Okay, so so have you have you met your goal of learning C plus plus in the last eight months? Uh, well, uh, yes and no. It's it's a it's a two sided sword. It's basically on one side, uh, I don't put enough attention sometimes during the class because I have to answer, uh, you know, people's questions on online, uh, do all sorts of, you know, arrangements which is uh, associated with running the, 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 the you know, the, the, our meetup. Uh, so I might not always participate as fully as I would like to. But on the other hand, that uh, as well benefits me because you have to start. You, you can't just say, oh, well, I'm, I'm tired today. You know what, today actually it's a very nice weather. I'll go somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> And and just you know like le- learning, I, I I'm a great believer of learning like like children do. Yes, you don't send a toddler to school to learn English; they learn by just practicing and doing it. So even if I don't, I'm not fully 100% concentrated because I'm constantly bombarded with the information. That I- this information stays, and I'm starting to connecting the dots together. And obviously, uh, at some point, that's you know bl- blossoms in, in a way like ah. Actually, I can do this, and, and and I can I can start creating some uh, basic code and a little bit more advanced code. So yeah, great on that side. All right. Um, yeah. So I mean, in ter- I, Tom's a great example, really. In terms, I mean, you, you originally well, you can disagree if, if I'm wrong, but you originally want to do this, you know, for yourself to to learn, essentially, right, Tom? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm and, still doing um, it. Exactly. That's 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 so that is precisely where I wanted to go. With this. I mean. In terms of your progression, like going from essentially not really knowing anything to, you know, going through our lessons where we're teaching you, you know, okay, here's the basic language syntax, here is how to use the various standard library containers, you know, ve- vectors, obviously one of those obvious ones we covered, and then obviously seeing you get to the point now where you're able to, you know, you're able to write code, you've got knowledge of structures, um, doing and also doing even more somewhat more advanced stuff like approaching inheritance and uh, to some degree architecture. You know, I, I would say you've come a long way without wanting to sound too deferential. Um, Thank you. Obviously, you know, you, you can come. There's the, you can always go further with C plus plus, right? The, the language is constantly <laughs> changing. Um, well, number seven is my is my goal on the scale of one to ten. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but no, it's it's been uh, it's been great, and I think everyone who's been on the journey with us. Uh, in terms of C plus under new, we've, we've had several other people as well who've, who've done really, really well, and it's really, it's really good to see as well. It's, it's part of you know what we want to do is, is help people, give back to the community, and, and it's then great to see that actually pay off. I want to interrupt the discussion for just a moment to bring you a word from our sponsors. Development of qualitative software is impossible without the use of static code analysis tools. These tools enable you to detect code vulnerabilities and ridiculous typos. By the way, many developers tend to underestimate the typos issue. That's why we suggest reading the article, The Evil Within the Comparison Functions. One of the most powerful static analyzers is PVS Studio. This tool detects errors and potential vulnerabilities in the source code of programs written in C, C++, and C Sharp. It works in Windows, Linux, and macOS environments, and it conveniently and easily integrates into the Visual Studio IDE versions 2010 to 2017. Try the demo version of PVS Studio and find errors in the code of your project today. So what is the target audience like? Do you have a lot of, you know, people who are coming into your your classes completely fresh, not knowing much C++ or not knowing any C++? Um, yeah, absolutely, we do. Um, we, we get a whole gamut of, of people. Um, so, for example, at the moment we've, we've restarted our classes and we had a fair bit of community-based sort of uh, promotion, if you like, from people who were from JavaScript or sort of similar backgrounds, um, and so they've got some prior programming knowledge. But in the in the previous one, um, we had a fair few people who had literally no experience at all, and it, it was much smaller than because we didn't have as much publicity. Um, and in terms of this time, I think there's roughly the same absolute number in t- uh, you know representing people that, that don't really have any programming experience. But obviously, we've, we've gained overall uh, for the new semester many more people. Um, you know, as a result of, you know, just folks coming along and discovering it's cool and they've got their own meetup groups and they're like, oh, you know, you should come along to this this thing. It's free and it's it's a great way to pick up There's been a lot of word of mouth that we've, we've been fortunate to uh, to have. To have, so yeah. Our numbers, have, our numbers have, have been increasing, so that's, that's nice. I want to talk about the numbers more in just a minute, but 
I am curious, you said you just restarted it and you talked about semesters. So like what, like how many weeks is the class? Do you keep, you, is your, is your goal to just keep doing the same class over and over again? Or how does that work? Uh, well, uh, basically what we did, we, we done the, the first edition of the course, which is approximately 26 weeks. Uh, we didn't follow any textbook. We just basically uh, trying to cover the 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 the, the, the base of uh, C plus uh, plus. But uh, during the during that, we basically learned quite a lot. We we see we were getting some feedback, and uh, we decided that this edition of the course should should be structured in a different way. Uh, so, but uh, before I cover that, basically to the to the target audience, I would like to add that. We are very, very much an, uh, we're trying to create uh, a group that is very much uh, inclusive. Yes, we're very open to people uh, with all sorts of disabilities, uh, people from minorities. Uh, we've been recently, uh, we had a, an article uh, in a magazine, Living with Disability. Uh, it's basically, <coughs> there, there are lots of people, I believe that, that, that there are so many uh, people who could benefit from that kind of uh, training and change their life in a very positive way. It's like, imagine you can't walk because you had, you've been paralyzed, but your brain is working like a super machine and your, your hands are okay, but you can't really get to, to, to a class and, 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 and learn because that's for you is a challenge. Or you can't afford because, you know, going for the trainings like that, they're fairly expensive. You could go for a PhD. Uh, that sets you for at least five years and probably fifty thousand pounds or more. Uh, so a lot of people would be excluded from that uh, possibility, and we want to cater for that kind of people. Give them a chance to come in and do something positive in their lives. So, so that's that's our motives behind. Uh, but the rest, I think, the, the question, your question, I think uh, maybe Tristan will be the best suited to to answer. Uh, so in terms of um Semester, so yeah, we we, yeah. we ran the course as a sort of an ongoing accumulation of knowledge because there's really no, you know, you can just you could go for years just learning more and more C plus plus. But we found that more people were turning up, sort of, fifteen weeks into a course and not really having any idea what was going on. And although all our materials are online, um, it's it's pretty hard to catch up after that. So we we sort of made the decision after what was it, twenty five, twenty six weeks. That we'd have a cutoff point and we'd begin again from scratch. And so now we've we've sort of decided. I think we're going to run perhaps 24 weeks and then begin from scratch. So we'll do it roughly twice a year. I think is the, the ongoing plan at the moment. Okay. So how long is each lesson? It's two and a half hours on a Tuesday evening. Two and a half. Okay. Hours, okay. And and what are each session like? I mean, how much detail do you go into? Uh... With, with the courses? So, um, I do most of most of the teaching. Ollie takes a few sessions when I'm not around. Um, try and do a real mix of uh, sort of presentation style, you know, delivering the material uh, mixed with exercises. So, to try and get people immediately with their hands on the keyboard um, going through, going over what they've just learned to try and get it to sort of Stick in, stick in their brain a bit better. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll deliver some material, give an example, and then an exercise. So, we, and then repeat that however, however many times we can as time allows in the evening. <laughs> and obviously, we have during during our class. It's not just uh, purely, you know, Tristan talking. Uh, Although Tristan explanations are quite, 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 quite good, I would say one of the best I, I came across. Uh, but we we try to structureize the classes in a different way, like to provoke students. So we have a liking talks which students needs to perform. So that we had on the on the on the previous edition. So we give them uh, like as assignment, pick something, talk about smart pointers, vectors, uh, functions, what, what have you. Uh, uh, they, they, they they work on small projects. So, for example, we had to do Pomodoro stuff, uh, and obviously uh, the session as well covers uh, stuff like you know uh, stuff which is associated with running a uh, uni, like trying to we ask we ask our students because they they are they are, they are grown up people most of the time. Uh, they are very clever people, so we ask them for advice, for help, uh, feedback, 
Uh, and on top of that, apart from the the, 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 the the meetup on Tuesday, we meet one more time during the week, uh, usually it's end of the week, uh, for like a working lunch where we discuss what we'll be talking for the next sessions, uh, the, the go through the ideas, try to explore new things which we could do, how to make sure uh, we're delivering the, the, the best contents to people and uh, obviously cover any any other, uh, let's say, uh, administrative issues uh, uh, related to, to, to the uni. Also on, on the subject of the, <laughs> the, the Pomodoro, that's, it's basically a timer. It, there's, there's, if you Google it, you'll find there's something called the Pomodoro method. This is actually Tom's idea. Um, so usually, yeah, when, when, Tristan, when Tristan's not around, I, I fill in also, I think, towards the sort of more advanced end of our, our course, I like to get a bit more involved. But we had these... Uh, it was a combination of everything, right? It was like live coding sessions when we were building it. We gave people sort of a base plate uh, project that they could start with to, to write the Pomodoro with us. We, we threw in some, some QT in there, so, or QT if you prefer, um, to get some familiarity with the GUI. Um, but they, they're a, a very fun set of sessions. Um, at, the, at the moment, obviously, our new semester, we decided to structure it a bit more rigorously, and we're now using uh, Biana's, uh, I always get this wrong, but I believe it's, Programming Practice and Principles of C++? Principles and Practice, I think. Principles and Practice, so yeah, there we go. Um, but we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. We may end up fitting in something a little bit more free flow uh, towards the end. But obviously, we are revolving this based on feedback. Uh, you know, previously, it was, it was essentially completely free form in how we did it. And now we're, we're obviously sort of basing it off the book. So we, we still do things in our own defined order. We're not just going chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. But we, we aim to always relate each lesson to a, a chapter or chapters and send people off with homework or tasks to actually do mm. when they've left. Right, so you starting from hypothetically no knowledge of C++ to what's at the end? Are they doing, you know, like implementing Boost HANA or? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, no, 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 joking. Uh, Oli, I think, Oli or Tristan, you, I think you'll be better as qualified than me to answer that question. I, mean, I, I, can, I can take it, sure. Um, so what we do at the end is, uh, for those who wish to, to actually do it, we get you to do a, a sort of final, uh, take a final test, and the test is really actually a, a project. So we give you a specification of what you need to do. Um, that specification may possibly be deliberately uh, ambiguous in certain places. Maybe possibly. That, yeah, with the idea that you <laughs> might want to come to us and have a chat. Um, because I, you know, I believe that's, that's also part of, of programming, right? You're, you're never going to go and work at a place and have a perfect spec. I mean, you, you okay, maybe you will in certain cases, but it's, that's, that's the dream, but it never happens. So, so anyway, you, you get you get this specification. We give you a week to do it, and the idea is obviously you, you need to produce something that, that actually works. So, you know, uh, last time around we did a sort of fairly simple um, text-based game for you to, to implement, and we, we try and make it encourage you to produce something well-structured. So when, when we actually take a look at your code, we're expecting to see a you know, use of OOP. Have you thought about these things and said, okay, well, this makes sense as an object. This makes sense as a, as a base with pure virtual you know, uh, member functions, etc. Have you written stuff like unit tests? And, and then we, we, we grade you on a scale based on, you know, does it actually work? What kind of bugs there are in there, if any? How much unit testing have you done, if any? Um, so so you, can still, you can still pass it if you've done something that's functional, and basic, but obviously you can go up the up the tiers as you've sort of implemented something ever more rigorous and impressive and robust. And they get a nice oh. certificate at the end. And you get oh, a nice that's neat. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, you, on the photo, I think you have. Uh, it, it's it's. Uh, I'm holding my certificate. <laughs> I mean, so the, in the, addition to being able to attend the courses in London, yeah, you can also watch these online, right? Yes, you can. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the idea is basically we want to make this as accessible to everyone, regardless of where they are, uh, and participate in the class. So if you if you if for any reason, let's say I don't know, you have a sick kid, or uh, you are a disabled person, or you're in different part of the world and you can't get on time to us, that shouldn't stop you from basically being a part of the class. You can do all the exercises with us. You can ask questions. Uh, you can do the homework. Obviously, you can read the chapters. Uh, so in every aspect, apart from physically being in a class, you are part of the class. Uh, and in the end, uh, if you participate a, with, with, uh, with us throughout the course, you can take the exam. 
and the the reason behind we decided that during the, the like halfway through our first edition of the course that we would like to create the this kind of certification at the end because uh, the reason really like unless you go for the PhD as I, said, as I mentioned earlier there is no way for you to for let's say someone who starts to get some kind of uh, confirmation of his skills uh, so they can't just go to the employee and say oh I did uh, you know I learned uh, personally for two three years uh, you know yeah, you know, how 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 do we know that's really is the case? Uh, with us, at least, we try to uh, maybe not completely fix, but at least fill to the degree, avoid and create a way so people can say, okay, I did that. And there are some uh, fairly experienced developers uh, who can vouch for me that I was part of the class, uh, I, I did my 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 learning, and and I have certain knowledge because frequently it's just that all that kind of certification is just the foot in the door. Then you have to prove what you actually know, whether you know it or not. You can obviously fake it, uh, but that very quickly will be clear out, and you know th there will people who are experienced. They will figure out that that you don't have the knowledge. So from us, we don't intend to give people easy certification. Like let's say you go to I don't know Udemy or or Pluralsight, you play you auto play the course, and at the end you get certificates. Oh, I know C plus plus. I uh, how long did it take you? Oh, something like six hours, and I'm done. Mm -hmm. And so here I need to actually commit. And uh, is it the course is free? Yeah, it's uh, that's our goal uh, because you, you, uh, imagine there are so many clever people uh, out there, and if we could, if if we're stopping someone who potentially might might basically introduce another Elon Musk or another Steve Jobs or uh, you know some some brilliant guy, and and we're stopping him because he can't pay uh, the fee. Well, that's that's not right. The internet, you can see how much you know we as a humankind progress in since the the, the, the internet kicked in. It's just mind-boggling. Yes, uh, you know we were reading in the books as kids, you know about flying cars and so on. Uh, well, not 20 years longer, uh, for 20, 30 years later, we actually getting to the stage where people are actually trying to to make this a reality. So uh, you know, getting more people on board with software development, I think it's a it's a very important. It's a very important, uh, very important thing uh, to do. It's like I would I would see this as a big mistake if we were trying to stop people. Mm -hmm. So the short answer is yes, it is completely free, and uh, <laughs> unless someone unless someone somehow tries to, to, to stop us from doing that, will always be free. It seems like I mean. Well, okay. I want to ask. I want to come back to the fact that it's free, but I want to ask another. I want to ask another question first. You said you got a significant increase in the number of students in your second semester. What does that mean? Okay. Um, uh, okay. Sorry, go go ahead. Yeah, okay. It's up to you. Do you want to take it? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, so that really was born out of the fact that during the previous semester, um, a few people showed up who started you know, just joining in from the mid roughly around the middle, I guess, or towards the end, who um, were existing developers like JavaScript. And it turned out that they actually had uh, meetups. One particular chap um, was, I believe, a full-stack developer. I know he was, he was doing JavaScript as well at the time. Um, and he was on a very big meetup.com group. And when we mentioned to him, you know, we're going to restart it in a few weeks' time, he, he just, you know, announced it on that meetup group. And uh, all of a sudden, we were seeing, like, all these crazy numbers of RSVPs, I mean, comparatively compared to what we were getting, I think for the first, like for the first session it was, what, roughly 50 people? Oh. You guys say the, that's, the, venue, uh, the venue held 70 and they were turning people away on the, the first time, so that was, that was quite something, the first session. Uh, yeah, I mean, so the, 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 the total RSVPs, we, we jumped to over 330. Wow. Okay, so... And then, and does that not include people online? I assume uh, that's in person, correct? Yeah. yeah so, I, if if you all are grading the uh, final exams for every, I mean, that's a considerable amount of time investment for you, right? Uh, it is. Well, Sorry, God. Um, do you want to go for that, Tom? Uh, yeah, I can. Well, uh, it, it does. I mean, it's it, it, we, we're spending. Uh, I mean, for me, the, the benefit is I, I'm, I'm I got the opportunity to learn, and obviously, it's a great thing. It's like if you if you are helping, uh, if you're helping other people, it, it, it is amazing. Uh, uh, I spent I don't know something like twenty hours a week 
probably Oli same and uh, Tristan probably even more than than that uh, working oh. on the project because you know go, going to going to the going to the to the class class is uh, two and a half hours you need to get there you spend some time before you spend some time afterwards mm-hmm. and so on uh, then it, we're going for the lunch and so on so so the, the, it, it is it is a it, it is a considerable uh, amount of time uh, so for us. We're working towards the, the success in the project, and success in the project is not just because we've done X amount of classes, but the, the success is to ensure that the product, project is sustainable. So uh, what we're working towards is basically trying to uh, get some uh, sponsor. Preferably, uh, it will be, I suspect it will be a bigger type of business who mm-hmm. sees a benefit in uh, having uh, highly skilled C++ developers, <laughs> Maybe at the beginning, obviously, that there will be, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, junior uh, level, but we're working on other projects as well. Uh, and they might find, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to, you're doing good, great stuff, you, you're helping community, you're helping the, <laughs> the expand the language. So language will hopefully will become uh, way more popular. Uh, and that will bring uh, positive things. So we hope that, you know, likes of Google, Facebook, Amazon, uh, and so on uh, <coughs> might reach to us and say, okay, yes, we would like to support what you do because at the end we will employ these people because we have a, a deep, you know, great need for uh, that kind of specialist and we will make your life easier and, uh, yeah, you can you can continue what you're doing because you're doing great stuff. That, that's what, what we would like at some point uh, to happen, yes. We we have a great feedback from a couple of, a couple of sources, a couple of, couple of uh, uh, bigger businesses already start you know approaching us and, and talking well, we didn't get anything on a paper yet anything committed but obviously that, that's the goal for 2018 for me to to get something going so to ensure that this project have a chance to survive uh, not only today tomorrow but uh, for years to come yeah so that that would be really amazing yeah, yeah and, that's cool. and just just to expand on the, the grading thing fortunately we only actually have four candidates uh, for each grade this year uh, in, in, the, in the previous one, so um, obviously that was that was something you experienced. Was it did take a while still to produce their reports and then get them have, have a friend adjudicate them and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I think approaching it this time, I'm sure we'll have a fair bit more still. I think I think in terms of myself scaling that up, it will just be a case of having a, a larger lead time on the sort of final awards for everyone. It'll just you know just be a, a case of time really. Uh, but also to speak to, to what Tom was saying about finding sponsors. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're sort of managing it at the moment. I mean, obviously, you know, getting in, there's the cost of getting into London. Um, fortunately, we, we have some sort of kind organisations who give us space for free, but they occasionally end up getting booked out by someone who's purchased the space for corporate reasons. Then it's like, well, you know, sorry, that's it, guys. We can't host you this week. So we, we sort of end up darting around London a little bit, sort of frantically trying to find a space that will help us. And it's yeah. been a, it's been a bit skin of our teeth sometimes. It would it would also be nice if we could sort of see find someone who's offering sponsorship, so we could sort of just find space and say to them, hey, you know, okay, how much do you want, kind of thing. But we're, we're not there yet, sadly. Okay. So you said you uh, are taking feedback from some of your attendees. What kind of feedback have you been getting? So, uh, well, okay, uh, feedback wise, it's well, it's great. Yes. Uh, Lots of people basically come to us and, and say, you know, Tom, thank you very much. You're really doing a really amazing, amazing thing. Uh, and we honestly have uh, lots of stories where you can see the impact uh, that kind of class can make in people's life. And I mean a personal life. Uh, we had one of our students who uh, had uh, basically a brain tumor has been removed. And he he's a developer, a very young fella. Uh, and he basically uh, start coming to us to keep up with the with the knowledge. So, uh, in a sense, we th- thanks to learning to us uh, and refreshing his knowledge, he can stay on 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 uh, on top and continue his professional work in the future. We have people who been become redundant and they trying to find uh, a new uh, expand the the. the Place where they can learn. We have students who would like to progress their their uh, their 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 experience and and get on 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 a work ladder. Uh, we have uh, people from different parts of the world 
uh, we have disabled people as well on, uh, who already started to, to joining our, our, our group. So uh, these people, we, we make a positive and, and, and a massive change to their lives, uh, basically helping them to do something which they might otherwise not have the chance to do. Yes, because, you know, it, like if somebody approaches us and say, oh, please help me, could you give me 50 quid and so on, uh, that doesn't really work, yes. Everybody got expenses and so on. So this way to make an impact, make make a change, it's not that, that really easy. Uh, but by enabling people to have the, 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 the possibility to change their lives, it's actually very, very, very nice thing uh, it, it helps as well us is like you know one of the I think uh, Buddha saying is uh, one of the things that makes you happy is basically to start helping others so that makes you happy as well and uh, and by through helping others you find your your own uh, role in the life as well which is great as well I agree with that I, I mean I've also heard um, feedback as well funny funny enough I think recently um, so as part of the, the final test uh, we do one-on-ones as well, um, and obviously part of that is to get you to explain your code so that I can sit there and sort of understand, okay, yes, you, you actually wrote this, excellent. Um, but then t- <laughs> towards the towards the end, um, you know, we just have, we have to sort of have a little chat, and uh, I, I've actually had two pieces of, of very interesting feedback. So if the, the, the guys that passed, who, who I had the one-on-one with, um, one of them expressed a, a keen interest in, in doing a sort of more, a, a more advanced or I'm not sure what the word would be, really be neat I wouldn't even say niche but specialized perhaps um, he was really interested in, in us doing a uh, course on like multi-threading uh, and concurrency that's sort of one of the things I particularly uh, enjoy doing and teaching because in terms of scalability these days right I mean you know the, the days of buying a really fast single core CPU are over where, whatever free lunch is over yeah exactly it's the free lunch paper right you know we, we, we need to use concurrency we need to parallelize I mean obviously that's not possible in all cases but um, for a lot of industry-based workloads where, you know, you're doing all kinds of socket I.O. and whatever, these are the kind of things that can, can leverage having all of those processing cores. Uh, and so currently my target is actually to, to take on that feedback and hopefully by the middle of June um, we're going to do an, a sort of entry session into that. And then even more interestingly, another uh, candidate uh, was expressing an interest in sort of taking apart build, build code, so sort of uh, some reverse engineering or learning assembly, um, and then sort of and just, just learning a bit of ASM. It's not obviously that's not exactly C plus plus. So I, I've kind of got a few ideas on how to kind of relate that back to the language. Maybe in terms of saying, well, look, here's some assembler, and let's take that back and try and imagine what C plus plus we could write to produce that assembler. So I'm sure I'm sure Compiler Explorer will be very heavily used if I if I manage to get to that, or maybe when I get to uh, manage to get to that. Um, but yeah, the, the, the feedback's great, and I, I think you should always learn from your feedback. You know, the, the courses we do, um, nothing's ever perfect, and, and taking on feedback is the best thing you can do to, to get towards improving what you offer. Uh, I'm curious, uh, from the standpoint of Oliver and Tristan, since you're the ones teaching the classes, what is your favorite class so far that you've taught? What's your favorite material to cover, maybe? Um, having just restarted so we're we've been going from the the very beginning um so we had a class last night that was session five we introduced talking about references and i've really uh really enjoyed going again from the beginning because we've got a whole new fresh set of people very smart students asking really really good questions uh so i've i've really enjoyed the last few sessions we've done going back to the the last run through um we did a session on our value references and move semantics uh, towards the end of the last course. But I really enjoyed teaching because um, there's that saying, you know, if you really want to master something, teach it. And mm-hmm. I found that just doing the preparation for that course really sort of crystallized my own knowledge um, of the subject. So I, that was another one I really enjoyed doing. That's cool. Um, and, yeah, I suppose for me, um, I think as my bio kind of said um, at the beginning, I'm, I'm one of those guys that is big on on testing. I, I'm not really religious on whether it's TDD or BDD or, or whatever it happens to be that you choose. But you know, these days in terms of, of writing software and minimising the number of bugs, because we all we all write bugs. It doesn't matter how how well you've architected it and, and split up concerns. You, you you need to have some kind of testing. And I think my I can't really say it's a favourite lesson on its own because it was something that was fed into. So uh, essentially, um, we taught 
people, you know, the, the ideas behind or the concept behind object-oriented programming and how, you know, you can have effectively what are known as, you know, interface another language, right, pure virtual base class members or in, just straight up interface to Java. And then we actually have Phil Nash uh, as a special guest. Um, I was wondering if you would take advantage of that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course we did, of course we did. We, we finally pinned him down. It took a, it took a few tries, but we, we, we managed to grab him. And he did a really great um, lesson at the end, just demonstrating Catch 2 to people. There was live coding, and that that was the favorite with the other lessons in mind, purely because it sort of brought everything together, showed people, like, here's how to take a framework, here's how to now write well-tested code. And, and you can see him, you know, like, he writes a bug. And, oh, you know, look how the test has caught this. Now, you know, this is never going to make it to production because you've, you've done something bad. And feeding that into, like, okay, having a class-based design, having those virtual interfaces and bringing it all together. And I think that was that, that was really eye-opening, I think, for, for a lot of the people there to see and, and just understand how powerful that can be. Neat. I think so. So uh, you mentioned that you guys are, are hoping to find sponsors soon. Uh, do you have any other future plans that you wanted to share with us? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, w what basically we would like to do is uh, we would like to expand on what we're doing, uh, try to create a, a more, basically what we would like to do is make sure that the, the, CP, uh, the, the CP Plus uh, London Uni expands to different places and uh, by economy of scale we can work with different cities and so on, <laughs> we can use the same materials. Uh, use the same uh, same prints, same same, same stickers, and and uh, same practices, and so on. So w what we could try to do is like possibly start aiming at gold standard how to teach people. <coughs> so it's not like read the book from chapter one to five and that's it, but ha work together with the people because that everybody got some. Uh, you know, we're talking about really clever people, and you know, let's take advantage of that. <laughs> it's like. Uh, if you are the smartest person in the room, yes, there is a saying, you are in the wrong room. Uh, yeah. So we, we have so many clever people, why not to use uh, their, their experience? Like uh, The most common questions I have from students is, Tom, where do I find more exercises? And every time I ask an experienced developer, can you help me with some exercises? They like they scratching their head like, oh yeah, exercises, oh yeah, I, I, I don't do those, they're, they're difficult, uh, I can't think of one. Uh, but now imagine we have like well, now we have five people on call and let's say we create everyone everyone will create two exercises so that's well straight away ten <laughs> ten exercises now if I ask one person to do ten exercises they would uh, look for lots of excuses why not to so if we have let's say fifty forty a hundred uh, experienced developers and they start creating let's say short clips <coughs> uh, demonstrating some functionality. And uh, based on that, they will create a, a basic, uh, you know, questions to, to do exercise for, for people and so on. Then somebody comes and say, I would like to, uh, to, to, to do some exercise about concurrency or inheritance or something else. It, oh, here we go. How many exercises do you want? 10? 20? Here we go. They're ready. Just do it. <laughs> uh, so uh, we want to use as well your, your platform to basically reach to people and... Uh, we're looking for basically for contributors to to our blog, yeah. So you can write your own story, you know, uh, even as a simple motivation to people, saying I started doing development because of and I did it like this, and show people that uh, you know becoming a developer is not uh, overnight, and it's not like oh this guy uh, he is amazing, he did it uh, in a super way and he's superstar. No, this guy put a lot of hard work which nobody saw. And that's the reason why he's so good. <laughs> so even that kind of motivation um, post, I really appreciate it. But what we would like to do on our website is to put uh, like a profile for those people so they can put a short bio about them and build their profile so they can be more recognized in, in uh, C++ community. So if you have, <coughs> if, if there is anybody who would like to do that, uh, start writing blogs for us or blogs about us on other websites, they are very welcome. Um, help us with, let's say, making the content on YouTube, for example, uh, uh, more accessible. So, for example, <coughs> connect uh, connect our slides and uh, uh, assignments and so on to our YouTube videos. Uh, fantastic. Give us a hand, give us a call, and, and we'll be happy to, to, to accommodate that. You have maybe another idea. You, you think, like, we're doing something uh, okay, but there's a better way. Or you have a really great experience with something else. Just come... come Come to us and tell us. 
uh, we are very open to that kind of feedback. We, you know, the, the, the worst kind of feedback, yes, so basically flipping up the question, that the worst kind of feedback is if we only hear, oh, you're great, then simply we assume we're great and we don't look for anything to improve. But if people tell us, you know, you could do this better or I'm <laughs> missing this part, okay, it's a vanity in everyone, yes, we love to hear that we're doing great, but when everybody tells you you're doing great, you, you have no chance to improve. Uh, uh, so, you know, be open to us, tell us, yes, we invite people to come to us uh, to, to, to our lunch and, and discuss. That's how we get a lot of really interesting ideas. Uh, yeah, so, so basically that, that's, that's uh, I don't know, guys, do you want to add something to that? I mean, yeah, so very briefly add to that. Um, if you're also in London or, you know, or you're coming to London or anything and you've got expertise in C++, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, obviously, you know, we had a feel as a guest, uh, you know, guest uh, lecturer, I guess. Um, you know, you've got something you think is worth presenting, please get in touch. We'd be very interested in that as well. Right. And just okay. just while we're on the subject, I just want to say thanks to Matt Goldbolt, who um, we were lucky enough to meet when he was in London a, a few months ago, and he actually did write a, a blog post for us about how he got started with C++. That was really great, yeah. and if anybody else fancies doing that, then that would be awesome. Uh, obviously, we have lots of people like that. Yes, obviously, we should mention uh, Jacob, who is helping us pretty much on most of most of the classes. It comes in. Uh, so we need experienced developers like Jacob. He pops in to, to a class, and if somebody got uh, some issues, stacks on on exercise. Uh, if we have, let's say, 50 people, uh, so even me, not being super ex experienced, yes, I'm trying to jump through the people and give them a hand. So if you have more more people like that who just pop in, that's really amazing. So Jacob, uh, uh, Robin Scholar, uh, Ricky from King.com, they are really amazing guys. They, they, they just come to just give us a hand, and we really appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Okay. Well, it's been great having you on the show today, guys, and it, it's great work you're doing with C++ London Nooney. I hope it uh, continues to be a success. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening in as we chat about C++. I'd love to hear what you think of the podcast. Please let me know if we're discussing the stuff you're interested in. Or if you have a suggestion for a topic, I'd love to hear about that too. You can email all your thoughts to feedback at cppcast.com. I'd also appreciate if you like cppcast on Facebook and follow cppcast on Twitter. You can also follow me at Rob W. Irving and Jason at LeftKiss on Twitter. And of course, you can find all that info and the show notes on the podcast website at cppcast.com. Theme music for this episode is provided by podcastthemes.com. Website at cppcast.com. Theme music for this episode is provided by podcastthemes.com.